Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Fedora 41 beta. This is the GNOME version of that and I'm really excited to dive into Fedora because we have GNOME 47 Denver with us and there's a lot of changes that I'm really excited to talk about. So without wasting further time, let's just dive right in. All right, so before I show you around uh, what's new in GNOME, this is the familiar Fedora that we all know and love, the control panel with the calendar and notification and the pills that serve as the workspace changer. We still have the beautiful dock. Again, it's a little bit bigger for my liking, but that's not an issue. We have camera, contacts, weather, a lot of apps, just to get you set up to just start running with your system and a pleasant surprise that i see right now is terminal now this isn't the terminal that i knew this this doesn't look like the gnome terminal let's just go to about and it really does look different okay um let's check out what this does and okay so you can have multiple terminals multiple tabs and if you do this you can see you can switch between your terminal. That's pretty good. That is actually pretty great. Let's check out what kernel we're using. So you name a, and we're on the 6.11 kernel. So that's pretty good. Okay, let's move on. I'm really excited about this terminal, by the way, and four rounded corners. I'm the biggest fan of that. The new wallpaper, by the way, it looks really, really good. And let's just change it to dark mode. Uh, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, totally. This is going to be the thumbnail. For the video usually i change the wallpapers let's just check them out real quick but this time i think the standard wallpaper that is provided is really good and you might have noticed we do get accent colors this time around and we have pink we have purple and we get green and yellow as well you know what we're just gonna stick to yellow for the video let's just see how that goes so Again, control panel looks really good. Let's just open something, for example, the calculator, and we can see that it did take the yellow color and it does look good. And along with this, you also get enhanced small screen support. So for screens with less resolution, the elements on the screen are gonna look bigger. You have screencast hardware encoding, which is pretty good. It leaves your CPU free to do the tasks that you're actually doing, and it leaves the recording task to the GPU, which is much better added anyway. One of the things, visual changes that I would like to show you is in the Files app. So the Files app, it looks as good as ever, right? And it did receive a couple of changes. Let's just create a new folder and I can show you. So. The new folder dialog box looks pretty good. Let's just, um, I don't know, let's just go with the name BB. Let's just create a file. Uh, let's just go ahead to text editor and we can do something. My name is Hunter Bun. Okay, we're gonna save this inside pictures, inside BB. Okay. So one of the things new this time around is actually the compression dialog box. So once you click on compress, you can see that it shows you the archive name. You can change it, of course, compression method. You can have it to, you can have it set to encrypted zip, tar, 7z, whatever you want, and you can compress. Pretty good dialog box, I would say. Another thing this time around, which is new, is if you have a picture, it would actually show you the thumbnail and so the new thumbnails, the on-demand thumbnail generation is faster and much better this time around. Along with this, you also get a new network tab. So inside a new network tab, you do get whatever is available on your current network. You can manually enter a server address if you wanna to connect to it. And if you click on the I button, it shows you a couple of things which you might need handy when you're connecting to a server. So that is actually pretty good. Along with this, you can't see these right now, but you also have the removable media, which if you have inserted in your computer, it's gonna show up over here in the left sidebar. GNOME 47 also introduces search improvements. So you can search over here. This, that would be the 
uh, this would be the address bar and this would be the search button. So it introduces improvements to file search by providing more contextual information about search performance. Uh, if there are any factors that affect the search performance, like the results, the, the files not being indexed properly beforehand, it will show you why the search is taking a little bit of time. Okay, now let's move on to the settings panel and there are a couple of things that we can talk about. First things first, let's just go to system. And so this was new last time around. We did get a new uh, presentation for the system section. So let's just go to about and we can see this is localhost live because I am running it off a virtual machine. Fedora Linux 41, uh, these are my system details. So you can see pretty good. We are on Wayland by the way. I mean, this is old news by now. And we can also see the kernel number and how virtualization is taking place for this system to be running. So, I mean, I guess we're all very familiar with the uh, settings tab, Bluetooth, displays, sound, power. This is all very familiar. By the way, you can set it to high performance if you really want that. One of the new things this time around is in accessibility. So let's just open a few windows so that I can demonstrate it to you better files. Let's just, uh, can we shrink that? Yeah. Okay, good. So let's just pull these away. That should look better. Okay. So what we could do now is pointing and clicking section has a new menu, activate windows on hover. So if I hover this, it activates. If I do this, it activates. You can see a subtle shift in color, which is really good to indicate that uh, the menu that you are working right now is activated. Now, if you don't click it, it won't come to the front, but it would be activated. So you can click something. You can click this. Okay. You can right click and it would directly open. You don't need to click twice. So that's something which is really good. Now, the latest release also includes a great collection of modernization improvements with many settings panels having been upgraded to use the latest interface components, giving this a more cohesive and contemporary look, which is pretty good. You can see inside general, we have primary left and right for mouse clicks, pointer speed, mouse acceleration. And this thing is really important because you have animations for traditional and natural scrolling, which is really good. And you can also test settings over here. You can click here, secondary click, double click and for scrolling you can check your direction with your trackpad or with your mouse i'm using i'm on a mouse right now so it's going to be a little bit different from your trackpad but you can set it to whatever you want keyboard i mean these are all pretty same but everything in gnome i like the simplicity i like the direction that they're headed and it just really 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 makes me happy Okay, so we also have some improvements to online accounts in GNOME 47, which include IMAP or SMTP email accounts uh, are now automatically completed based on the address used. Kerberos accounts use less power on an ongoing basis. By the way, somebody commented on my last video about GNOME 47 on what Kerberos is. So I pinned his comment and you can check it out in the video. And it was really good and detailed explanation. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Email, calendar, and contact integration have also been added to Microsoft 365 accounts. And when setting up web dev accounts, available services are now automatically discovered to provide a more streamlined setup experience. So let's just go through the show app section and let's kind of check out what we have. So we do get LibreOffice, Calc Writer, and Impress, which are the equivalents to uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Uh, let's just check which version we get right now. And while that opens up, let's just go to maps because maps is really interesting for me. Now they did include a ton of improvements to maps. I really like to just uh, scroll through the different areas in maps, by the way. Uh, I'm in India, so it's not the best over here for Google maps, but if you are in Europe, then it's really, really, really good for you. Uh, this is inside a VM, so the internet connectivity isn't the best. So bear, bear with me for that, but the thing is GNOME 47 comes with ton of improvements for maps. So they feature public transit routing in selected locations rather than relying on commercial services. Maps now leverages a community run transport routing service. So that is pretty cool. Maps also use vector tiles by default. A few other smaller things is that disk usage analyzer has been improved in ever so small ways. So let's just open disk usage analyzer. Let's close maps and you can see home folder and the entire disk. 
So we can go into each of these and check out just exactly what we have for our usage. That's pretty good. This is the entire system. And that's only the home folder. A lot of things is changed and it's just so good. It feels good to use GNOME, by the way, really good. And you also have weight cursors, which have now been refreshed to adjust to the new spinner widgetry in the platform. That's pretty good. Anyway, let's get back to LibreOffice Writer and uh, about LibreOffice. So we are using the 24.2.5 version, pretty good. Uh, I really like uh, the look of Fedora and I really think that a lot of people are going to enjoy uh, diving into the world of Fedora. This has always been one of the best operating systems out there, period. So yeah, let's just uh, come to the conclusion of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.